Hickok 45 here. Well, actually, I'm not here yet, but I'll be here directly in the video you're about to watch. And what you're about to watch is a video that John and I recorded before we fully understood the new uh, YouTube terms of service. All right. So we have edited mainly the uh, sponsorship spots. OK, so you'll see a few edit points in this video. And because of that, we want to be sure to thank the people that support us. One of them is Buds. You know Buds? A fixture in the industry. Been with us for over 10 years. Great company. Also, Silencer Central. High, high quality company. And they do one thing really, really well. And you got to love that, don't you? Also, the Sonoran Desert Institute, sdi.edu. You can get certified in gunsmithing. You can take all sorts of great courseware there from a distance. As well, uh, Alabama Holster. You know that I love them. Been using those for a long time. Great little Kydex concealment holsters. We really appreciate everybody that helps us out and has been loyal to us. So, especially you all, right? <laughs> so anyway, enjoy the video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hickok 45 with the old Springfield trap door, right? It even has a trap door on it. Yes, the 1873 Springfield trap door rifle. Yes, that's what we're about today. Some of you have seen this on a Sunday morning weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Others of you may not have seen this rifle, okay? Because it's actually an 1873 Springfield trap door rifle, yeah. You've seen the carbine, I hope. I'll link to that. And uh, I'm going to shoot it today. Yeah. I uh, hope you uh, hang around and enjoy it with me because there aren't many firearms that are more, I don't know, interesting than a trapdoor, a Springfield trapdoor. Uh, yeah, I tend to call them trapdoor Springfield. I think officially it's Springfield trapdoor. And uh, this one I have had for about six months. I'm sorry. I apologize for not showing it to you before now uh more so than a sunday morning but uh i've had that one that's you've been refinished and no sight on it it's an 1884 and you you know for a long time this is uh i decided uh you know a year or two ago if i ever ran across one that's just in you know original condition in 1873 like this with a sight in place and everything i might be tempted and I was at the Louisville uh, gun show, <laughs> gun day, back in the fall. And uh, yeah, I, it is, it's a nice one. It really is. And guess what it's chambered in? Sure, I don't have to tell you. 4570, because that's what the 1873 was chambered in. The Springfield trap doors were after, you know, the 1865 model, 1866 models, you know, up through the, after the end of the Civil War. And we have videos where we've talked about all of that quite a bit, so I won't rehash all of that. But the, uh, you know, after the Civil War, we had, what was it, almost a million uh, of the muskets. And uh, they tasked uh, Erskine Allen, Allen with converting them to breech loaders so they could use the a cartridge, you know, they were copper cartridges at the time, lead, of course. And uh, he came up with a trap door back here and you can get the round in from the rear and they were 58 caliber. And that was his model 65, I think, right at the Civil War. And then the 66 was an improvement, went down to 50 caliber. I think that was 50, 70, right? The caliber of the cartridge, but, and that was pretty successful. You see those around, the 50 caliber ones. And for quite a few years, yeah, I think the next significant change was, of course, the uh, 4570 went down to 45 caliber, and uh, and ma actually manufactured them, you know, as this firearm, uh, because most of those others that came before this were conversions from the uh, you know the 1861 or 63, you know, the muskets, the uh, uh, muzzle loading you know, rifles. So the 1873 which it says right there, model 1873. It looks like an eight. It's actually a, a bad stamp on that. Uh, I thought, what, 78? What's that about? But it's just a bad stamp. Uh, so it's a 73. Got the sling and uh, the sight. 
and it's a beauty. So we're gonna shoot it some and uh, let you feast your eyes on this beautiful thing. U.S. Springfield, a military assault rifle. That's what I have. All the proper cartouches and just everything. And I will tell you, uh, these, I have always thought the, the Springfield trap doors were fairly reasonable in price. I've been seeing them and I've had that one I was telling you about for a long time. So, I, you know, I've, I've got one of those, they're cool. And then I found the carbine several years back and just, well, I don't really need one of those. But I have noticed all through the years that, that that'd be someone at a gun show, uh, a good gun show with lots of uh, variety of firearms, old guns, new guns, and everything. Now I have like eight or 10 of these things. You look through them and you know, they're, they're not $5,000. Uh, they're yeah, closer to what a replica costs, you know, for a, a decent one, one that would fire, you know, and be operational. And then for a little more, you can get one that, uh, you know, is a little nicer, but they don't cost an arm and a leg. And they might, that's relative in an arm and a leg. You might think it's an arm and a leg, uh, depending on your income, but they're not, they're not crazily expensive. They're, they're really not. So I, uh, I went ahead and uh, took the plunge. It followed me home from Louisville and I, I've enjoyed it. I think I know where it hits. I don't mess with the sight a lot. I don't shoot long, long range, but uh, I, I've noticed I need to hold, make sure I hold low enough on the target, depending on the ammo I'm shooting. I'm shooting trapdoor ammo uh, or ammo that's trapdoor safe. This is from Steinel. In fact, they load it specifically for, you know, trapdoor safe and uh, loaded some of that and some others even lighter. Got some black powder, might fire a couple of rounds. And I thought you'd deserve to see this thing. You know, we've got pretty good lighting and you can, you know, uh, as, you, as you can tell from the close up, it's just a beautiful, beautiful firearm. Can I fire it again? All right. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of ammo, we appreciate wideners.com. Check out any description. Get your discount code there. And uh, so this one was made in 18, it's a model 1873, but it was made in 1887. I looked up the serial number. So 1887. How about an orange two liter? I think it was made for that. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, the guys back in 1887, they probably didn't test it on two liters. I just have a feeling they didn't. They left it to me. They probably didn't even test it on bowling pins like that one right there. They left all that work up to me. Now this one's a little different from the carbine. You're, you're supposed to cock it, like half cock, uh, and uh, before you can work the uh, trap door. And then full cock is right there. I noticed on the other one, like the first notch, I can, on the carbine, I can, you know, work the trap door. So I'm not sure what the difference is there, but to remember that. So, uh, I got a few of these in my pocket, actually. That's a 405 grain uh, bullet. That was kind of standard. They did load some 500 grain bullets, too, later for them. And it had 70 grains of powder. So, 45, 70 uh 405 was the cartridge talked about that in a lot of these videos and uh so it's just a nice cartridge 45 70 i wonder if i can hit a buffalo over there <laughs> rolled him didn't it he didn't hesitate he didn't have to uh have to ha do a Hollywood uh, death like you see in some of the westerns. Oh, you got me! I'll fall over slowly. <laughs> that other uh, buffalo might need to be hit. He never wants to fall. Ah, yeah, he went down. He went down. <laughs> Pretty neat. I think I know where to hold. It's kind of on the bottom of the target, and it does the job. Let's try that red plate. On the left. Boom. Hits that hard too, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to shoot with a little black powder, aren't I? Uh, you'll get mad at me if I don't. I might get mad at you when I'm cleaning it. Although a single shot is not that, that hard to clean. So, like I say, you know, after the Civil War, all these muskets that were converted, and that was pretty good. It, it helped save a lot of money. And, uh, 
and then they came out with this. This was from 1873. It's basically the military issue rifle between 1873 and 1892-93. And it was used after that, using the Spanish-American War uh, in the Philippines all around. Uh, and they had pulled them out of inventory for various uh, engagements here and there. Didn't have enough crags. You know, the replacement for this, the farm that superseded this, was the 3040 Crag, uh, you know, bolt action rifle. And people tend to look at these as like junk, that old junker single shot or something. But, you know, that was kind of the, uh, uh, the just the way of militaries at the time. It, it's not like you're totally disarmed. You're not armed, as I've said before with these things. You got a belt with cartridges on it. You pop that out and you put another one in and, and you, you know, you can load it pretty fast and you've got a very effective cartridge at long range, short range. Uh, so, you know, you take a sight picture and hit what you're aiming at. Uh, the 4570, they want something for the military that would drop a horse and uh, something with power. And uh, it definitely had that. Uh, so just, just a neat cartridge. Again, the first early cartridges were copper, which expanded a lot and it got weird in the leather uh, belts and all that kind of thing. And that's what they had some trouble with at the Little Bighorn, the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Uh, you know, some of the, the cases got all green and, and uh, difficult to extract and all that when they were shooting so much. And, but uh, it, it, as I've read, it wasn't the firearm that caused the loss uh, at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, depending on which side you're on, right? Loss or victory. It was mostly the tactics and, and all that, not, not you know, the rifle so much. I can relate, though, to when a cartridge gets all that green stuff on it and you know, icky, <laughs> if you ever had that happen. Because I'll leave brass card. Brass does the same thing, really, maybe not as quickly as copper. But I've had brass cartridges I've left in a leather belt in the moisture and whatever, and you pull that thing out after a few years, and ah. Uh, it's a lot of work to scrape all that, that crud off of it. Just uh, so I can, I can understand that. Uh, nickel cases are, are better. <laughs> they should have used nickel. Why don't we, we'll shoot a couple more of these and we'll shoot some black powder before I let you go. Okay. And uh, like I say, we've, we've talked a lot about the history of these and, and uh, you know, in the carbine video. This is the carbine, the shorter length, you know, same gun just cut down. It's a 20, about a 22 inch barrel. The rifle had about a 32-inch barrel, a little bit more, and these were issued to cavalry and, and, and some other, I'm sure, uh, units, and handier and shorter. i tell you, though, shooting out there long range, I don't know, I seem to shoot the rifle a little bit better, I don't know, but that's a, that's a really nice rifle as well. Uh, these are, they're just special, uh, and it's hard to find someone who doesn't like them, you know, they're just cool. Nothing like a trap door spraying field or even a spraying field trap door and let's smoke a little pot with it you want to cock him all the way back i bet it'll go through that pot and into the burn barrel what i tell you okay i'm gonna put another one in here i got it in my pocket and i'm not gonna shoot again cock it and let's hit the bowling pin <laughs> since you can get rounds off especially if you train you can pull another one out and uh you know it is single shot but and it's not fully semi-automatic or anything but you know pretty effective pretty effective why don't we uh, try a little black powder 1887 let's see that one is uh 1879 right if i haven't forgotten right but 1880s 1870s and they're still shootable isn't that cool uh, that is pretty cool I didn't bring my cleaning rod out here, so I want to make sure this is the last thing I do, so that uh, that uh, as soon as you all leave, I can get the ballast all after that barrel and, and get a patch pushed through it. Why don't I shoot just a couple more regular rounds, and uh, then just before you all escape, we'll shoot some black powder, okay? I mean, this thing just deserves a couple of rounds of black powder, no doubt about that. All right, we'll see a couple more over there. What do you want me to try to hit? How about that ram? <laughs> Nothing like hunting big game with this thing. And we might as well put the last one on our big 
friendly gong. My best friend on the range. <laughs> wow, I can see the hits and so much lead got splattered up there. So single shot, Springfield trap door. Uh, so much history. Oh, I, I'm not gonna wrap it up here. I was trying to get you all out of here. I'm gonna shoot a couple of these. I promised you, didn't I? Well, I didn't promise, but I'm gonna do it. Okay, let's make some smoke. This is what it would have looked like in the 1870s and 1880s. Right here, a little smoke. They weren't shooting a two liter, but they were leaving smoke like this. <laughs> How's that? Oh, smells good. Let's put one of these on the gong. <laughs> All right. Seems to ring a little louder with black powder, doesn't it? Let's put the last one up there, too. Did I miss? Maybe, got, maybe it went a little higher. I think I was holding about the same point. We bring it down a little bit. There we go. <laughs> that was it. Had to hold a little lower. So anyway, Springfield Trapdoor, uh, so much history. Uh, I'll link to one or two of the videos we've done on these things. And uh, if you have interest in these, if you think they're pretty cool, and this is the first time you've seen one in action, I don't know, what's wrong with you? Maybe you're only seven or eight years old. But uh, yeah, browse around our videos, other people's videos, uh, the internet. There's so much information on these. They're, they're, they're very collectible. They're beloved by a lot of uh, shooting enthusiasts. A lot of good information on them. And you know, as with most of these types of firearms, you know, there's little bitty differences as you move through the various years in the 1870s with a slightly different sight or, or a contour on the hammer and just whatever, just like with a Colt pistol or something. Uh, lots to learn about it. You can really nerd out if you want to. And you will see these at gun shows, large gun shows. You will see them in various conditions. They're, uh, they're, it might sound rare, you know, wow, a gun from 1887, but, but there were just a lot of them made and a lot of them have survived. And I'm glad this one survived. And I'm glad I survived to shoot it some more. Yeah, I'm glad you came out. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.